Ever wonder what makes Counter-Strike 2 maps so aesthetically pleasing? Is it the shaders? The lighting? The models? No, it's the doors. Valve made it mandatory in its vision to make all doors their focal point. Don't believe me? Here's their catalog of doors available to choose from. Just walk around a map and try to find one door that's boring. It's impossible. Source 2 is so powerful it makes the most mundane things look so gorgeous, and in this video we're going to build a beautiful frame around an ordinary door to bring it up to Valve standards. I'm Sammy Chimona Hee Hee Alayubi, and today I'm bringing you Hammerhead number 4, Building a Valve Approved Door. This video series is not meant to teach you the basics of how to use hammer tool settings, it's meant to show you one of the countless purchases of different pieces of equipment, and I assume you watch every single tutorial after the basics. I'm going to use a standard door frame size of 112 by 56 units, and create a scaffold around the model of the door with a flat quad. Using the clipping tool, I create a series of edges that will carve out the dimensions in its entirety. This allows me to easily extrude faces in and out. I like to use this method along with the player info start entity to get an idea about how it's going to scale. Using the edge arc tool on an open edge from a deleted face, I create the frame above the door of the windows. The technique I use here to get perfectly inset edges is separating each arc face into its own mesh and then selecting the top perimeter of the arc and using inset bevel repeatedly in edge mode. The final inset is made in face mode for the bottom lip. This method does end up separating the faces into their own meshes, which can be helpful when it comes to the UV pass. Using the scaffold, I'm going to extract out the rough dimensions of the pilaster on the sides of the door. This will help me with the overhang. Creating the overhang from a new mesh layered over the scaffold is just one way to avoid extracting the face of the scaffold. I turn this rectangle into a triangle by dissolving one of the edges. I could have just extruded up the triangle mesh earlier and deleted a few faces for a faster method, but didn't realize that until making the video. I delete the faces of the meshes except for the top slants and thicken them to get the exact shape needed. I then use the clipping tool and slice the bottom so that I have a new face to extrude. Using scale and setting the pivot, I can add layers to the overhang. The pivot has to be centered manually for the extrusions to be in the correct direction. For the pilaster, I create a new mesh over the scaffold. The moldings are a series of loop cuts that are evenly spaced out. Using the inset bevel across the selected faces allows them to be thickened. Some of the edges are dissolved for some angled architecture. For another method on how to do this, check the second episode of Hammerhead on Greek architecture. A quad slice across a face that's inset beveled makes it easy to evenly divide the face and extrude every other slit. The top of the pilaster moldings are made the same way as the bottom moldings, through a series of loop cuts and inset bevels. Using quad slice some more, we can make these wedges quickly with some face extrusions. With the pilaster finished, I delete the faces from the scaffold and create an instance. Using the mirror tool, I can quickly copy the instance evenly to the other side. I really can't stress out how important it is to utilize instances at every single chance you can get. One of the things I like to do at this stage is use hotspot dev textures to differentiate the different parts and make it easier later when we do a UV pass. Just a quick contrast can help you see what the final product should eventually be looking like. The rest of the overhang frame is made using loop cuts directly into the mesh and then extruding out the newly cut faces using scale towards a pivot point that is centered. Some of the ridge decoration is quickly made using the quad slice tool. For this front piece of decoration, I use a scaffold of the arch and uh, make it its own mesh with copy paste special and uh, then extracting the mesh. This technique allows me to preserve the original faces but use them as a starting point for any additional accessories. The arch fill is divided into quadrants by manually creating edges and connecting vertices. Each quadrant face is extracted and then inset bevel to create a border. Some of the vertices are merged to get rid of bad faces that are created in the process. The UV pass begins with quickly applying some windows through fast texture onto the just created quadrants. The pilasters will be easy to quickly add some beautiful UVs with the hotspot blendables that are available. Any chance that you can use a hotspot blendable, use it. Change some of the tiling settings around to make sure that the borders especially look a lot more believable. 
Here I'm constantly switching between toggling the hotspot application to each individual face or all of them combined to get the desired look. For the main mesh, I'm going to just keep the scaffold and apply a blended material onto it. Now, I could have dissolved all the edges and just subdivided the mesh, but I decided to keep the edges and that would be enough for the blend layer. With vertex paint mode enabled, I blend the bricks closer to the frame and door and fade them outwards by changing the strength and radius. Hot spot blended textures need just a little bit of variation to be believable. Change the strength of the blend and try to give your decor a story, such as cracks and dirt near the bottom and closer to frames where it's stressed, giving whatever it is that you're holding up a little more structural integrity. Instances make it really easy to set up massive amounts of detail quickly. Just be careful that it doesn't repeat itself so easily. But one way you can do this is at the very end, collapse all your instances and then change the blends up so it doesn't look like it's repeating at all. And one great way to use these hotspots is to make the border really pop out. Just to, even a light pass on the edges makes a big difference. A uh, bevel pass on edges of meshes is one of the most powerful operations you can use. These edges are beveled with a width of one unit on most edges and soft normals enabled on these operations. I try to do this after applying the UV to the faces since it can be a total pain to work with if you've already split the faces apart. You could always define them with hard normals and later go back and hotspot them but I'm already happy with the effect came out and I don't want to add any extra work. Um, and not all faces need to be beveled, uh, only the ones that are going to be creating the desired soft normals that are being used. And be careful without going overboard on this operation because it will begin to eat up a ton of resources if it's being used unnecessarily. That being said, it is arguably the most useful operation added in since Half-Life Alex. And for our finale, just add an environment light for effect and throw on that beautiful GPU tracing to show off your creation. With this knowledge, you can live up to the standards Valve has set for all doors to be beautiful. Here is a time lapse of the entire process from start to finish. This is sped up at 2600%. Hope you enjoyed this hammerhead. Remember, there are multiple ways to make something, and if you have a method that's different than the one shown, we would love to see that. Please like the video, join our Discord in the links below, and subscribe to our channel to get the latest in Counter-Strike 2 mapping.